He's an environmental engineer by trade, but he's an inventor by nature. He's John Schofield, and we caught up with him in his latest invention, his ball machine. To watch it in action is like watching a visual representation of John's mind. Always moving, engagingly complex, and infinitely interesting. Our first chance to see the ball machine in person was, of all places, inside Willard Scott's barn in Brownsburg. The NBC television personality owns some beautiful property in the Shenandoah Valley, although he doesn't get the opportunity to spend much time here. In addition to his work on the Today Show and commercials, he's also the host of Willard Scott's Home and Garden Almanac. His production crew and executives from the cable channel in Los Angeles flew out to tape a couple of shows on location in Virginia. WVPT was allowed to go behind the scenes during the show as one of our state's environmental engineers stepped into the limelight. John Schofield's ball machine invention has attracted plenty of attention when it's been displayed at places like the Virginia Military Institute and the Science Museum of Virginia, and he's been written up in the press on a regular basis. But now his local celebrity status is extending Nationwide. Slate. Rolling on slate. Slatage. Got it. Okay, still rolling. Got slate. Stand by. Got speed here. Action. Hey, now this is what I call a real do it yourself machine. This is unbelievable. John Schofield, Lexington, Virginia. The producers of Willard's program say the ball machine was a natural for their show which reaches 16 million homes across the country and Canada. Yeah, let's uh, close that door up, please. Well, one of the things we like to do on Willard Scott's Home and Garden Almanac is showcase inventive people with inventive ideas. And that's what John Schofield does. You know, he, he's able to take household items, uh, skateboard wheels and uh, tin cans and funnels and billiard balls and turn it into a work of art. Even without an audience reaction, everybody working on the show knew John's ball machine segment was going to be a hit with viewers at home. We talked about it. He said other people could do it. I don't think there are many people could put a machine like that together. I couldn't. I can't even fix a toilet uh, balance to make it flush right. So he said he couldn't either. <laughs> I doubt that. It, it, it's ingenious. Yeah. The man has a gift. It's a gift. Schofield didn't waste any time taking bows for his performance. In fact, he's already busy building a new ball machine okay. that he says will be even bigger and better than his first. He finds used parts for his inventions in trash cans or any place else he can dig up unusual items that would get people's attention. Skateboards, highway signs, whatever he can find that doesn't cost money. Unfinished and unpainted, this machine may not look as fancy as the other, but he's made a number of improvements on this one giving it a whole new twist. And uh, have one of these things. These are telephone bells. This is a spring from a car. It's kind of neat the way the ball just hangs in there. Schofield first developed an interest in ball machines after reading an article in Smithsonian Magazine about George Rhodes, the creator of this type of contraption. Then while visiting his parents in Massachusetts, he went to the Boston Museum of Science and witnessed his first ball machine, a huge one, three stories tall. They went through the Science Museum. I never left the ball machine. I just stayed there and then the weirdest coincidence, my wife went out to a yard sale with my mother and father and found a bunch of billiard balls. Same day, and I thought, hey, here it is. We're starting. So I bought some steel and 
just started puttering around making these devices. This type of ball machine has been described as an art form, but they're often showcased in science museums. So which is it, art or science? Oh, I don't know. Um, I guess that's not my point to judge that. Let, let, let others judge what it is I'm doing. I've had a lot of people say that this is like a sculpture, you know, so it has some art to it. Uh, there's definitely some science, but a lot of it's just tinkering. Trying to put a label on the inventor may be difficult, too. John Schofield is a Penn State graduate who, working as an environmental engineer with the State Health Department in Virginia, specializes in drinking water and municipal sewage. And did I mention, on top of everything else, he's an accomplished mandolin maker? You know, if you think that I fit in the mold of a government bureaucrat engineer, I'd probably break that mold in some fashion. Schofield lives with his wife and four children on the outskirts of Lexington, where the whole family is accustomed to watching him spend countless hours working in his shop across the street from their house. Three of John's kids are students at the Effinger School, and teachers there take advantage of the ball machine's educational qualities by bringing groups here on field trips to see it in action. There's always something going on in his head. I wouldn't call it genius nearly as much as hard work. Anything that he tends to do, he does extremely well because he puts everything into it. His hard work and dedication have perhaps made John Schofield the most famous environmental engineer in the state of Virginia. Until next time, this is your old pal Willard Scott reminding you to keep your homes and gardens filled with all kinds of love. Bye-bye. That's all we have time for in this edition of Blue Ridge Journal.